You can think of the physics functions, position, velocity, acceleration, and jerk, like a ladder. The very top of it is position. One step down is velocity, and one step down from that is acceleration. If you take the derivative of position, you get velocity. If you take the second derivative of position, you get the derivative of velocity, which is acceleration. So to go, for example, from position to acceleration, all you have to do is take one derivative to get to velocity, take the derivative of that, and you get to acceleration. There's a few more functions below acceleration, for example, jerk, snap, crackle, and pop. But we'll be focusing on these three functions for this particular lesson. So in physics, if you have constant acceleration, this is your position function. x of t is equal to 1 half at squared plus v naught t plus x naught, where a is a constant, v naught is your initial velocity, that's a constant, and x naught is your initial position. That's also going to be a constant here. So the only variable that we have is t. So when we find, for example, the velocity, the velocity is just the derivative of the position. It's one step down the ladder. The derivative of 1 half at squared, the 2 comes out in front, cancels out with the 1 half, and we have at plus v naught times t. That's just v naught. And x naught goes away because the derivative of the constant is just 0. So here, right here, is the velocity function based upon this particular position function. If you take one more derivative, acceleration is equal to the derivative of velocity. The derivative of at, since a is a constant, is just a. And the derivative of v naught is 0 because v naught is a constant. So our acceleration is constant and it is a. Now in real life, why would acceleration be constant? Well, the reason is because gravity is always pulling down on us. And in, usually we use that in meters per second squared and that's approximately 9.81 meters per second squared. But since it's going down, we call this negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So given gravity as a constant force, you can find the velocity function and the position function if you were to go up the ladder. We'll talk about that more in applications of integrals. However, for the time being, since we're doing derivatives, given position, we can find our velocity function as well as our acceleration function. Let's do a problem. Our position over time is negative 3t squared minus 6t plus 7. What is the velocity at time 2? Well, to find the velocity at time 2, we first need to take the derivative of position to be able to find velocity. So, velocity is the derivative of position since it's one step down the ladder. The derivative of negative 3t squared is negative 6t. The derivative of negative 6t is negative 6. The derivative of 7 is just 0. So the velocity at time t equals 2, we just have to plug 2 into here, negative 6 times 2 is negative 12, minus 6 is negative 18. We don't have units here, but if our position was in meters over seconds, this would be meters per second. If we were in miles over hours, this would be in miles per hour. Acceleration at time t equals 5. Well, the acceleration function is the derivative of the velocity function. And the derivative of our velocity function 
The derivative of negative 6t is negative 6, and the derivative of negative 6 is 0. So we have constant acceleration, negative 6. So the acceleration at time t equals 5, since acceleration is constant, is just negative 6. So from our position function, we can take the derivative and find the velocity at any time t. And we can take the derivative of velocity and find the acceleration at any time t. Furthermore, we can take the derivative of acceleration and find the jerk at any time t.